we're going to be testing some forces on caving rope stuff. We are going to, hey, it's the official name for SRT, man. So uh, we're going to start with the tensionless hitch, which is hilarious because once you set it up, it, you instantly know what the results are. And then we are going to test some Y hangs, all the forces you're going to see when you're caving because you don't exactly chalk up and climb and take too many lead falls except in super super rare situations no no so it's mostly repelling and jugging uh we don't jug sorry 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 we ascend ropes in caving my bad we're gonna cover all that in this episode stay tuned <laughs> so uncomfortable Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and this is Rachel Saker, and we are uh, pretending to cave. I'm clearly in a puffy, and I'm very new at this, as you can tell. But we are going to measure some tensionless hitches, some Y hangs, and some other ascending and repelling stuff because the ropes are super static. And when I was bouncing yesterday on a rope, I was like, "Woo, I might be putting some force on this." So. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna just dynamometer the crap out of this open air pit. Did you know open air pits are a lot easier to film? Because you can see. And she won't be complaining that I'm shining lights in her eyes. So let's get started. This is an interesting rope coil. Their ropes are so stiff. Uh, like this thing can literally be held out sideways. So this is 11 millimeter with extra extra crispy sheath. All right. Point eight. She's, she's locked off. Okay. Go for it. So Rachel is fully on the rope and it, the rope is going over three different lips right now. So it's actually not any more than when she was leaning back and our tensionless hitch has raised from negative to zero. That's amazing. That's a tensionless hitch for you. That's a basic ass repel. What is a rebelay? And Rebel why are we doing that? Rebelays are where you reattach the rope to a new set of anchors so that way you can not have the rope rub like this. And instead, you just make it be a nice free hang the whole way down there. That is a really freaking cool... I, I just have never done a hole this big. It's a pretty big hole. So a rebelay is where it's reattaching to some sort of anchor. These are happen to make a, like a y-shaped knot but the fact that it's a y is not why it's a rebelay it's See, the fact that you're reattaching the the rope to get another set of anchors that it makes it a rebelay because you're re-establishing the belay so you don't build a, like a climbing anchor and then clip to that master point you literally make a knot that clips to both hangers make a knot with the ears what's that knot called it's a fusion knot kind of like a bowling on a bite, except it won't collapse if somebody is dumb and only clips to one ear and then falls on it. Is this gonna be pure magic? Pure magic. It's actually witchcraft. Loopy witchcraft. So how many times have you twisted? That looks like a figure eight. Guess what, it is a figure eight on a bite. Take this guy. Oh, it's a super eight. No. this guy oh can you like screw up which bunny ears you clip to what side no or is it pretty stupid so proof you, at that point you want the top shelf of it so this part yeah facing out. out because if you clip back here your carabiner just sinks behind the knot gotcha it makes it harder to get off of it gotcha. it's all life support like it's it, you can't clip to something that won't hold your weight so we adjusted the Y hang to accommodate the dynamometers here. And then on the next rebelay, we're gonna put the dyno here so we can see what her almost 130 pound ass with gear is putting on the dynos. We have a little bit more on this one than this one. You can see here, they're not perfectly equalized. It's pretty hard to equalize things. We have this leg is shorter than this leg. And that is probably, oop, now they're, oh, do what you just did. I'm just hanging. Oh, 
Swing that way. So as she swings around, you can see how they will put the force, swing back and forth, kick off the wall. Uh, do a little monkeying. There you go. Let's put a peek on this guy. I want to see what this guy does. This is super neat. Look at this thing. Oh my God. And it's just like in the middle of nowhere. So she's jolting around right now. She's almost down to the next rebelay. You have 0.5 and 0.44. She has not maxed this out higher, but you can see it's not perfectly equalized, but you can also see that, let's say this holds in this limestone, theoretically could be 20, 30 kilonewtons. And you seriously have some serious safety ratio here. We are gonna have some more information in the Bolting Bible for bolts and caves, because there is a whole different culture and rock type that deals with that. How you doing down there? So we are at our next relay. This is probably the coolest thing I've done in a long time. How you doing, Rachel? I'm doing great. Okay, so what's, uh, what's our situation? We got one bolt here. Mm -hmm. It's a single bolt relay. So you just tie a figure eight to it. Instead, we did it to the dyno. Seven two. Let's see what the max you get at. Be a little jerky about your uh, rappel. Like rappel like me. <laughs> one point three one. And she is at the next rebelay. So anytime you touch an edge, you kind of got to set it up so the rope's not rubbing. Otherwise, it'll rub through your rope. But uh, interesting. It was only 0 0.6, 0 0.7 if you're doing it smooth, but it jumps that high when you are not smooth. So Rachel just got to the ground and she is going to ascend up the rope here. Okay, I'm going to put peak force on. Start ascending. She's doing the frog ascension method so the frog method here is you're basically pulling the rope down through the curl that is on your d-link on the harness so you put one ascender up you pull it through and you have both feet in the foot stirrups so how you doing let's see what the number is so as i hold real still you can see how much that bounces around and she's pretty smooth at ascending the rope. And you can see that the knots stretch. You can kind of see here how the rope stretches inside of that knot. I don't think it's absorbing so much to throw our number off. We have 0.92 is our peak force so far. Are you already hot? Yeah, there you go. Do it like really bad. I mean, that's, 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 that's as bad, bad as it is. That is bad as you go. Okay, guess the number. Uh, 1.2. Well, 1.14, that was pretty close. All right. So you got a safety ratio of 20 to one uh, when you're going on one bolt and we're on two. So yay cavers. Here's some bonus material. She just repelled super fast. And then when you slow down, you're, I can't say the word shock load, but that, I mean, you are shocking it a little. She got 0.94 on her rappel. My turn. I'm going to leave the peak force on and I'll, the next time we film, we'll probably be up here. That's super rad. This is kind of what it looks like down here. Super cool. I don't know what's over there. And we found another rope. So now we go up this and there's a whole nother pit. Another thing, whatever. I don't know my terminology. Ooh, look at this flow stony stuff. This is all the calcium deposits from the water dissolving the existing rock and moving it onto this rock. Look, I tried to sound like a geologist and clearly I'm not. Check this out, it's a whole nother thing to explore. And what she's ascending on is free hanging. So hopefully it's a super strong enough rope. Look at that. It's stainless. It's a dry cave. Galvanized <laughs> fine in a dry cave. <laughs> huh, bomber. Yeah, and then when you're on this rope, it's levering this quick link Ooh. on that rock. Ah, it makes it easier to remove later. You just take a whipper on this. So here are some cave bolts. Would you look at that? 
Self-drive. That thing's only in the rock a uh, half an inch, maybe? The threads are, at least. Maybe two inches with the self-drive, but... Cool. Yeah, that's my cell phone. So this stuff is super cool about caving. It never ends. There's no top to the mountain. Uh, I'm going down this passageway right now, and yes, yes, I do wear a helmet, but that's how you're able to see me right now is because the light's shining in my eye. So you know when you climbed a mountain, you know when you've reached the peak, but when you cave, how's the rest of that go? You can never be certain that it does not go on. You can never be certain it doesn't go on. Let me show you. This just goes on and on the direction I'm going. You're, by the way, you're not supposed to wear a puffy when you're caving or one glove or street shoes or no knee pads. But I cannot stop until I figure out what's around the corner or down that hole. We're back up in that chimney thing. It's up there. Yeah, it's just a shingle forever. So uh, that's caving. It's an addiction and gives you just enough to keep you going. What's up there? When I ascended up here, uh, I was trying to put up as much force as I would naturally, and I got 1.61. So not two, but I'm also not 200 pounds. So interesting, you just, this isn't gonna likely see more than two kilonewtons and neither one's gonna see definitely more than two kilonewtons in this kind of a setup. All right, Rachel, it's all you.